Hello and welcome. In this video I'll be showing you how I built this kitchen countertop sink unit out of concrete. I'll be walking you through how to take a few bags of concrete and turn them into this nice luxury piece. I'll be walking you through all the steps that I took to make sure the sink and faucet line up correctly and all the corners are nice and flush. To start out, I'm going to build a concrete mold, the base of which I'm using this pre-cut piece of PVC board. Onto my PVC board, I'm going to make a reference line, which will be the first straight line that I'll make all my measurements from. I'm using my rafter square to mark an inch from the factory cut edge of the PVC board on either side. Next, I'm going to use a chalk line to snap a straight line between those two points. I'm going to have an assistant help me hold that right there. And I'm going to drag it across. And I'm going to make sure the line intersects the middle of both points. How's it look on that side? Good. And then I'm going to pull it tight. <laughs> From the reference chalk line I just made, I'm going to measure 3 eighths inch down and mark a point. This will be the line that I use to mark where my screw locations go. I'll repeat that same 3 eighths measurement on the opposite side of the PVC board from where I started and make a mark. Using those marks I just made, I'll mark another line using my chalk line. Now I'll make a mark 27 and a half inches from my original reference line. Then from that mark, I'll mark 3 eighths inches up. Now I have two lines that are 3 8 inches apart. And the bottom line is 27 and a half inches from the original reference line that I made. And the middle lines are 26 and 3 quarters inches apart. Next, I marked a pair of vertical lines 3 8 inches apart on either end of the board, with the outermost lines being 73 and a half inches apart. Now, on my inner lines, I'll make marks for screw holes. On those marks for the screws, I'm going to pre drill holes. Now to mount the walls of my concrete mold, I'm going to take the outer edge of my 1x2 plank and line it up with the outer line that I made and clamp it in place. I can now screw into the plank from the back of the board and remove my clamps. I did this for all four outer walls of the concrete form. I place the screws about 10 to 12 inches apart. There's no need to be precise with the measurements on that. I just need enough to hold them in place. At the corners of the mold, there are some gaps. So what I'm going to do is pre-drill some holes and then screw the ends into each other to close up those gaps and make the mold a little bit more secure. Now when I insert my screw, it'll pull that gap together. So 
Next I'll locate where the hole for the sink is going to go. I'm going to measure from one of the short edges, 21 and 3 16 inches, and mark a point. Then I'm going to move my tape measure down a little bit and mark another point, 21 and 3 16 inches. Between those two points, I'm going to mark a straight line using my chalk line. It's always nice when you need a third hand to have somebody there to help you out. Next, I'm going to make a measurement 4 and 7 eighths inches from the bottom and make a mark. Then I'll move about 12 inches to the right of that point and make another mark at 4 and 7 eighths inches. After snapping a chalk line on those two points, I now have two reference lines that I can use to line up the template of my sink. For the sink. Using those two reference lines, I lined up my template and taped it down, making sure to get it as flat as I can with no bunching. I can now wipe away my reference chalk lines and begin tracing my template onto the PVC board. Once traced, I can pull up my template and I now have reference points where I can mount the inner walls of my concrete mold. Next, I'm going to need reference points for the screw holes to mount the inner walls of the concrete mold. So I'm going to measure 3 8 inch to the inside of the horizontal and vertical lines that make the outer edge of the sink. I'll measure two points on each of the four sides of the square template, and then I'll snap straight chalk lines between those points. Onto those chalk lines, I'm going to make marks for my screw holes, and they don't need to be spaced any particular distance. I'm going about maybe six to seven inches apart. Then on those marks, I'll go through with my drill and pre-drill holes for my screws. To make sure these boards are in the right spot, I have a screw going through the back side just so that the tip is coming out the other side. Then I'll take my board and I'll line up the outer edge with the outer edge of the template. And once they're in line, I'll press into the screw that's sticking out of the board and it'll make a little divot where I can pre-drill a hole. Now I have both the outer and the inner walls of the concrete form in place. And for the inner walls, I rounded off the corners using sandpaper. To do that, I used a strip of sandpaper and I just kind of rubbed it along like this. Next, I'm gonna work on getting the hole for the faucet in place. 
For the hole for the faucet, I'm using this piece of inch and a quarter PVC pipe. I've cut it to two inches in length and I've made sure that the edges are flat. And then what I want to do is make sure the inner circle of the PVC pipe is concentric with my template circle. To secure my piece of PVC pipe to the PVC board, I've put JB Weld on one end of the PVC pipe, and then I'm going to line it up with my template circle and press it into place and let it cure for 24 hours. We have our expert kitty inspecting my work. She seems to approve. It's been about two days since I glued the PVC pipe section. That's gonna be the hole for the faucet. It feels pretty secure. And now the next thing I have to do is add silicone to make the mold watertight. I'm adding silicone where the wood meets the PVC to make it watertight. And if you push the silicone, you get a nicer bead than if you pull while you're applying it. To give the concrete countertop some tensile strength, I'm going to add this quarter inch hardware cloth mesh. I'm cutting out holes so that the mesh can fit around the hole for the sink and the hole for the faucet. And I'm making sure that I have a 3 8 inch gap between the edge of the mesh and the walls of the concrete mold. To get ready for the concrete pour, I've got the concrete mold laid out on a flat surface. And I'm wiping down all the wooden edges with some cooking oil just so that it'll help the concrete from sticking to the edges of the mold. We've also laid out some newspaper just to prevent any concrete from getting on our floor. And I've got my tools on hand next to the mold to be ready to spread out the concrete. For the concrete, we're using Quickcrete crack resistant concrete because it has little fibers that help prevent cracks. And we'll just be mixing by hand in a standard medium sized concrete mixing tub with plenty of water on hand. I'm going for a mix that uses about three quarters of a gallon to about a gallon of water per bag of concrete. And the finished countertop will use just under four 60 pound bags of concrete. To fill the mold, we mix the first two bags of concrete and put them on either end of the concrete countertop. And then once those were placed, we mixed the third bag and had it on standby while I spread out the concrete that we already had in the mold. What I'm trying to do when I'm filling the mold is I'm trying to basically get it full to about two thirds depth and evenly spread out. So that way I can put my mesh on top and then continue to fill the rest of the mold. Once filled about two thirds deep and flattened out, I'm gonna place my mesh and I wanna make sure that I have that 3 8 inch gap between all of the walls of the concrete mold. Then starting from the middle of the mold, I'm gonna add concrete on top of the mesh to hold it down and make sure that it's completely flat as I put the concrete on top of it. I'm going to add the rest of the third bag of concrete so that I can empty our mixing tub 
and then I'm gonna have Brittany mix the fourth bag so that way I'll have enough concrete to finish out the mold. As I'm spreading out the concrete over the mesh, I wanna use firm pressure to make sure that there's enough concrete going through the holes in the mesh and mating with the concrete on the other side so that there's a secure bond between both layers of concrete. Now I'm just topping up the mold with concrete so that the level of the concrete is flush with the top edge of the mold. Now I'm using my magnesium float to smooth the bottom side of the concrete countertop before it cures. concrete needs to sit and cure for about seven days so in the meantime I attached some handles to the form of the concrete as well as some bracers to keep the concrete in the mold when it's time to flip it over and reveal the finished product. To get the concrete mold off of the finished concrete I'm going to flip it onto the cinder blocks and then remove the mold. To remove the mold all I have to do is just remove the screws that hold the walls of the mold in. Once that's done I'm just going to pry up the PVC board and there should be a finished concrete countertop underneath. Well, not quite finished. Unfortunately, there were some air bubbles that remained underneath the concrete, but this was kind of expected. To remedy that, I'm going to use this Quickcrete Concrete Patcher. And I'm going to spread it over the entire top surface and sides of the concrete countertop. To spread it, I'm just going to grab a dollop of the material and then I'm going to press it very firmly into the surface of the countertop. I'm adding just a very thin layer and then the firm pressure is to make sure all of those voids are filled up with the patcher. Then I'm going to use a concrete sanding kit to sand off the patcher and smooth out the concrete so that it'll have a glass-like finish. The diamond sanding discs that I'm using work best when the surface is lubricated with water. So I just wet the surface down with the hose and I'm using my hammer drill with the special bit that was included with the concrete sanding kit. This is what the surface looks like after the first round using the 50 grit pad. As you can see, the voids in the concrete are now filled with the patcher. I'm sanding down all of the visible surfaces of the concrete and I'm just going to leave the bottom as it is. The edges of the countertop were somewhat sharp so I'm using my sanding disc and rubbing it up and down like this to make a nice rounded edge. It's also recommended not to skip any of the grits so I went through all 10 rounds 50 to 3000 grit. And once I was done, I took soap and water with a scrubbing brush and cleaned all the dust off.
After a few rounds of cleaning and a nice rinse, we have a nice smooth finish. Here's an example of the rounded bevel that I made on the edge of the sink using the technique that I described earlier. As you can see, after the final bit of polishing, the countertop has a nice mirror-like finish. The next part of the process is to build the support structure that's going to hold the countertop in the sink. I've got the sink clamped in place exactly where I want it, so that way I can locate the supports that are going to hold the sink in place. With the sink in place, I can make marks where I can mount the supports to the countertop. I'm using 1x2 planks which will be glued to the bottom of the countertop and to those I'm going to mount the sink and the legs which will support the countertop. After applying a bead of liquid nails to the 1x2 plank, I'm using my clamps to clamp it in place and making sure it's lined up with the marks that I made. I'm repeating this process until I have a sort of frame underneath the countertop. To that frame I'm using some pre-cut pieces of 2x2 two two to hold and support the sink in place. I'm also using that frame to mount the legs which are made from 2x2s. Two and then I'm also using some cross braces for extra stability. I plumb the drain for the sink and the water line in with just basic PVC fittings that you can find at Home Depot. And the faucet plumbing is hidden nicely behind the sink in the back. I'm using standard GE silicone to fill the gap between the sink and the countertop and make it watertight. Now time to test our new faucet. This one is a major upgrade from what we used to have because it's got the nozzle that has two different spray types. And having the undermount sink under that extra two inches of concrete gives us a nice deep sink. Using the template for the sink and making sure all of my measurements were on point ensured that the sink mated perfectly with the countertop. Also, the sanding kit left such a smooth surface that I can run my hand across it and it makes a nice, satisfying squeak. Adding this kitchen countertop unit transformed our kitchen and we're very satisfied with the result. Now we can look out the window and enjoy a nice view while we're standing at the sink and the light spilling in from the window adds a nice sheen to the countertop. I hope you enjoyed my walkthrough and found it useful. Thanks for watching.